Good evening and welcome to the Red Hook Town Board meeting of September 23rd. Would you be kind enough to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands in one, one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Very good. Thank you all very much. Um, I will attempt to uh, share with you the screen here for the folks at home so that you can see what the agenda is for this evening. We have just a few items on the agenda. They are primarily technical in nature. So if you've had difficulty sleeping, um, I think that you'll find this meeting to uh, perhaps be uh, productive. Um, we have just a few announcements uh, this evening and I will scroll through them. Uh, the first is, and this is a sideways chart, I apologize, um, but we wanted to give you an update on COVID in, uh, in our community in Dutchess County. It's been a while since we gave you an update to the numbers and that's sort of good news. Um, we have in Dutchess County 140 active cases, uh, six of which are in the hospital uh, right now. Uh, the town and the two villages uh, continue to report five or less cases. And I can tell you, having concluded um, my weekly phone call with uh, Bar College, that they are remarkably still at zero cases and they are getting tested on a daily basis. Um, many of them, uh, they run hundreds of tests each day. Um, they actually drive them to MIT so that they can get the results the next morning and they're doing a terrific job. So we uh, wanna encourage them, keep up the good work there. Um, the positivity rate uh, Dutchess County or in the region is about 1%. We have seen a bit of an un it, um, uptick in the community, excuse me. Um, and so we'll be watching, uh, obviously, as uh, more and more businesses open up to see uh, how things are doing. There is a, a countywide effort uh, with local police communities, those are communities that have police departments. Um, they are holding community forums, they're remote obviously. And a forum is coming up this Saturday for the towns of Rhinebeck, Red Hook, Milan, and Clinton. It's from three to five. If you'd like to find out um, more information about it, you can go on duchessny.gov backslash Police reform. Okay, um, other announcements. Uh, unfortunately, like many of our wonderful events are getting canceled. Tivoli Street Painting, which um, is a favorite of many in the community. I'm the one who gets hired to paint squares because that's all the talent I have as far as painting. Um, it's been canceled for obvious reasons. That would normally be this weekend um, up on Broadway in the village of Tivoli. Okay, uh, scrolling through. Uh, one other announcement, uh, Oktoberfest dinner, the VFW is holding not for another month or so, Sunday, October 25th, four to 7 p.m. Takeouts available and they have a good menu. If you don't know where the VFW is, it's right here in the village on Elizabeth Street. Those are all the announcements. Does anybody else have any announcements that they would like to? Uh, okay. All right, uh, correspondence or rather uh, public comments. We had uh, a communication from uh, Linda Keeling. Actually, this was just prior to the last meeting. Um, has a couple of questions uh, and comments. Would like to uh, once again get the agendas posted three days in advance of the meeting. We do try to get the agendas all together. We scramble 
each and every meeting to make sure we've got everything that we'll be discussing um, before we go ahead and we post those agendas because we don't want people to see one agenda only to then add on to it. Um, I think at the last meeting, we weren't able to get it out until the morning of the meeting with all the documents. So um, other questions, when will town hall open? Um, town hall is not yet scheduled to open to the public and for folks who uh, want to understand why, we want to do everything we can to keep our constituents safe and also our employees safe. Uh, a good example that we lived through was in 2017, if many of you recall, it was a bad flu year and the flu hit uh, the town hall employees here and it wiped just about everyone in the building out. We literally had only a greeter at the front door and government was sort of brought to its knees here for, for a few days. So uh, we're very cautious about taking unnecessary risks and we, we feel that we're able to conduct business as best as we can um, with our Dropbox uh, procedure. Uh, more questions, St. Margaret's committee will check in again with Bill O'Neill beforehand. Um, questions about playground, yes, the playground is opening, uh, is opened and um, we uh, suggest we look at our signage for protocols there on, on the park. We have 12 uh, hand si sanitizing stations that we've installed in the park. Uh, please be sure to either um, engage in social distancing or to wear a mask, please. Uh, please be considerate of, of your neighbors. Um, okay, we have another uh, Jonathan Becker um, is interested in uh, are the question regarding the polling districts uh, at town hall at the last meeting or two, we discussed the fact that um, town hall's main room, which is less than 900 square feet, uh, we felt was insufficient to hold the general election for two election districts. We asked the Board of Elections to please take a look at this. Um, we simply got a response that, that um, without an explanation that the, the, the polling districts are going to remain here, that's seven and eight. Um, I am, am rather baffled by it because it, when we requested for the primary, that we relocate um, the polling site here to the school, which has much larger uh, rooms and facilities. There was no pushback on it. Um, they accommodated us, the school district uh, did at the time. And for some reason, um, the Board of Elections is not uh, granting that request uh, for the general election. Okay, and uh, Jonathan refers to CDC coronavirus guidelines uh, when determining um, polling locations and also how to safely conduct elections. And we would remind folks, there are several ways to vote this year and we'll put uh, more information uh, on our website, but uh, New York State has enabled paper uh, uh, votes for those of you who feel that um, uh, voting in person is not safe from a health perspective. Um, absentee voting, of course, has been uh, in place for many years, and there is early voting at uh, the town of Rhinebeck Town Hall, and that's another interesting uh, situation because neither Red Hook Town Hall nor Rhinebeck Town Hall have been open to uh, the public uh, so far. So uh, we will put a, as much information as we can on the website for you. And here is that link that Jonathan included with this question. All right, um, shall we jump right into our rather short agenda today? Uh, first is a resolution authorizing adoption of a new records retention schedule. And Chris Shaw, Chris is our attorney to the town. Could you explain to us why we need to do this? So um, the state archives uh, routinely issues a um, procedure for all of the municipalities uh, to follow in terms of the records that are required to be retained. Uh, the clerk's office is the repository for our records. So um, any archives uh, from offices uh, other than the clerk's office need to go to the clerk's office um, uh, for disposition 
um, either archiving and long-term or uh, disposal if, if the records retention schedule allows for that. So this actually uh, has a very specific schedule in it about what to do with which kinds of records, bank records, you know, resolutions, all of that sort of thing. Some are permanent, some are for a certain number of years. Um, it really depends. And so uh, they've issued a new schedule and they've asked each municipality to adopt that as their own. Um, and uh, so uh, it's effective already, however, uh, because they made it effective, I think in, I wanna say maybe a couple of months ago when it was issued. So this is a formality really, um, but this will govern how we deal with our documents. Okay. okay. And that's uh, pursuant to Article 57A of the Arts and Cultural Affairs Law. All right, so this is resolution number 40... 43. 43. Okay. 43. Dated S September 23rd, 2020. And I so move, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. All in favor? Christine, aye. Jacob? Aye. Aye, thank you very much. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda relates to, and we have a link on our website, by the way, if you would like to read the couple of hundred pages of that records retention schedule that comes with that law, you can link right there on our calendar, September 23rd. Next up is resolution number 44. It's to hold a public hearing regarding the adoption by the town board of the town of Red Hook of local law B proposed of 2020 regarding updating qualifications and procedures for building and zoning office staff. And this ties in with agenda item number three. So we are uh, doing more and more uh, shared services, intermunicipal agreements. This relates to the building department in particular, and there's a requirement currently that an officer must be a resident. And obviously if we're doing shared services, and in particular, this is designed for, we have a few structures um, in the uh, town and village of Red Hook that are, um, the single structure is in both municipalities. So it's more efficient to have um, the one municipality do conduct the inspection, for example, utilizing both codes, however, and um, report to, um, to the other municipality. And so um, agenda item number three is the IMA, which enables this. And uh, agenda item number two, this local law uh, modifies our code to allow uh, not only that, but to allow uh, officers to provide for deputies to conduct uh, certain portions of uh, the business with that department. Is there anything else, Christine Shaw, you'd like to add to that uh, description? Um, I think I think you've hit the high points. The the local law does. Um uh make consistent some provisions that we have in our both our building department and our zoning department so that they can um subject to the board's appointment of course um back one another up uh with the part-time staff okay. as well as the shared services arrangements that that are sometimes put into effect right So are there any questions about this? We would uh, call a, a public hearing on it for October 13th, maybe 745. You can Robert? Bill? Uh, yeah, I did send an email to everybody with... Um, you had a one word change there. Did that get in there? Uh, well, I haven't I seen I that. it was copied, but my, my reasoning for that was that the word strictly is a subjective term and what's strict for one person could be lenient for another and vice versa. And since this law is really just about granting the authority to enforce the law, I, you know, I, and that's what I did for a living for a long time. I never saw anywhere in the law where it had qualifiers other than impartiality. 
So I, I just think it's not necessary and it could cause issues down the road. So Which Bill, I, I don't think I got that uh, email. So if you could tell me exactly where that is. And section, we'll... because section D, the very first line says the town zoning enforcement officer shall administer and strictly enforce all provisions. I just wanted the word strictly uh, stricken from that. A little too stern, huh? Okay. Well, no, more, he's looking for more clarification. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's strict for some person is lenient mm -hmm. for another, and it's really, you know, um, it's too subjective. I'm Should sure. also be kind of implicit in the, in, the, in the text, even if you take it out, you enforce the code. Yeah, yeah, you enforce the code. And, and, you know, the purpose of this law actually is not about how we enforce it. It's granting the authority to people yeah. from other municipalities to be able mm -hmm. to enforce it. So um, this really seems kind of superfluous anyway. Chris, you okay with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the text. It's good, it's good. and section D. So, well, that's five, what I'm, are, are you saying 4.1? By 5.2 D. Oh, okay. 5.1 D? 5.2 D. 5.2 D. Subsection D of section 143. D, the town zoning enforcement officer shall administer and strictly enforce all provisions. I'm sorry, are you talking about text that's in the local law or text that's in the law generally that you want to change? It's in the draft law. Section five. Are we looking at the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you go to section six, I'll severability. Put it on the, it on the, the screen for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Oh, it's 5.1. Uh, a little weird. Okay, hang on. Amendments to the copy I have. Oh, huh. 5.2. So we keep going down. It might be 5.2. Uh, the notice of public hearing. Huh. That's odd. Uh, hang oh, on there. one second. Let's see if we can find what I sent you. Unless we uploaded the wrong draft. Huh? I'm not seeing it on the one draft. Let's see here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I pulled this off the draft you sent around. Mm -hmm. I mean, just give me one second to uh, look at what we sent. Yeah, and then you can do a search to get the original document open. I know. I'm just. Uh, just gotta get it. We're looking at the same thing here. Yeah. Whose background is that? Okay. I'm not seeing 5.2 has been uploaded yet. Mm. See if we can get that. Yeah, I'm not even seeing in this version the severability section six. Yeah, I'm wondering if, if we just don't have the full law in this. Last, last page or two on this. For some yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Here, this let's last see. page never made it uploaded. That's why. All right, let's get that. Um, yeah, give me one second and I can uh, no get worries. that to you and you can maybe show it on the screen. I don't know if Matt had it on a two-sided page or... But, uh, you do a share screen on she that. She said that was attached to this. I'm not sure that it is. Okay. Yeah, this version has 5.2. There we go. All right. It is in this version. Right. Um, so, Robert, um, I'm going to send you this again. Just, right. just this. You want to do a share screen on this? I'm not sure I do. Let okay. me just send it to you. Fine. So I've got too many other things open. 
it would get confusing. Okay. You and I can practice that some other time. Okay. This is. What I'm going to do is, how about, as we're doing this, I'll take the word strictly out of this version. Okay. And I'll show it as a black line so that you can see it. And then we'll have the full document as well as the change. Yeah, because yeah, we're full document, we're just missing a page. Missing a page, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Let me just send you that. Yeah, I probably don't know what happened in the scan, but I think it the one we sent you that was in there, but. Yeah, no, I'm sure it was probably a two sided page and got lost in the shuffle. Oh, right. Right. Let me know when it goes through. Yeah. Okay, you should be getting it any second now. You don't have it yet? Oh, I got it. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how to get it so it's nice and readable. There we go, the last page. Oh, of course, I can't do uh, a screen share at the moment. Hmm. There we go. Okay, thank you all for your patience. Technology is great when it works. Five, two. So well, that's what we're referencing this uh, long paragraph in section six and seven. The first sentence, the town zoning enforcement officer shall administer and enforce all provisions. So right. that's at the rate. Were there any other questions uh, about the, uh, the local law? And it references all the relevant uh, impacted sections of our code. So uh, October 13th, 745, resolution number 44. Nice and move, is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, Bill Hamill. Aye. Jacob Tessa. Aye. Hi, thank you all very much, and thank you all for your patience as we try to work through that. We'll go back to uh, the notice. Next up is the third item that we mentioned, which is authorizing the execution of the intermunicipal agreement to, with the village of Red Hook, and they've uh, reviewed the agreement for shared services regarding building department. And again, this is for those uh, one-off situations. Um, 
If I could suggest it also is very helpful when you have a conflict situation or something like that, or we have an illness, um, it's, it's, a, it's a backup arrangement. And I will say that this is the, the same sort of IMA structure that we've typically used where uh, there are basic terms in the front part. And then uh, the exhibit is where we have the plan for shared services that outlines the specific services to be shared, which in this case include both building and zoning departments. Um, and then the specific services, this is not an all of the time thing. The specific services are to be provided um, on the basis of a, um, uh, an estimate of cost and um, at a specified uh, hourly rate um, and with specific authorization for each uh, incident so that this isn't a, um, this, isn't a, this is not something that's intended to be sort of for whenever it seems convenient. It's for uh, when it's specifically authorized uh, by each of the municipal officials the mayor, the supervisor, All right. so that we have budgeted authority and so forth. Okay. And we've discussed an initial rate of $50 an hour to cover our costs. It's uh, resolution number 45, authorizing the execution of an intermunicipal agreement with the village of Red Hook for shared services regarding building department services. And I so move, is there a second? Second. second. Bill Hamill got in there by a nose. Uh, all in favor, if there is no further discussion. Christine Kane. Aye. Jacob Testa. Aye. Very good, thank you all very much. Well, that is our mostly administrative uh, meeting that we have. Now we now have our board reports. And, um, we have board reports tonight. Let's go back to the screen. <clears throat> uh, okay, we have the water board. And Bill, would you like to give a quick summary of what uh, transpired? Certainly. Okay. Um, the water board is now in meeting uh, at, outside at town hall at the picnic table. It's usually Hank, Fernando, Doreen, myself, and one other member, socially distanced and masked, of course. Uh, for the September work session, which was uh, this past Thursday, um, covered the month of August. Everything seems to be running well. We did use a lot of water in June and July. Um, it was hot, it was dry, but things are come back to, uh, have dropped back to where they normally are. The wells are pumping at about where, where they expected them to go and uh, the water tests well. Um, there's really the only issue that came up is off, off of um, Whaleback Road, there are a couple of people who are interested in uh, coming onto the water district. Uh, and I think we're permitted for 700 and we have about 500. And so uh, there was some discussion about if they were willing to pay for the, for the installation of the line, would they do it? And, um, you know, it's still an open discussion. Other than that, uh, the wells seem to be weren't running well and, um, you know, just maintenance things on fences and things like that nature. Okay, good. I don't see that we have any other board reports, I think because they had meetings recently and we'll get those reports from our next meeting planning board, uh, ZBA. I don't have any reports from them. Do, does I, can, I did sit in on part of the planning board. Um, okay. you because there's, there are two things that uh, I think it's important to share. One is the planning board has lost three members. Uh, they are down to the bare minimum of four. Um, and two of those members, Lisa and Callie, have agreed with the board, with our board's approval to serve as alternates uh, in a pinch. Um, but various things of uh, life events have gotten in the way and um, the three members, uh, Vanessa, Callie and um, Lisa, cannot sit on the board. So um, Sam is asking, you know, that we 
do what we can to try to backfill those positions um, in the coming period. Okay. The other is uh, ongoing discussion involving an application for a heliport, mm -hmm. which is Caddy Corner. It's at the corner of uh, Rokeby and Route 9, Caddy Corner to the entrance to the Hannaford. Um, it sits right across the street, less than 100 feet from two houses and a neighborhood. And um, the applicant wasn't present, but his attorney, uh, uh, Warren, Warren Roplansky, was there. They would like to do not a public hearing, but a public information session on October the 5th for uh, all the members, everybody who lives in the area, all the people who live in the village uh, of, of Red Hook and, and other interested parties. And um, they'll obviously do it by Zoom. And there was some discussion uh, after that public information session, which we'll get into various details of what the applicant is asking for, whether they would want to do an actual demonstration of the helicopter landing and taking off for, especially for the people who live right across the street. And actually there are two houses right next to the actual helipad. Um, I drove by there twice the other day and I think it's less than a hundred feet. So that was the other issue. Um, that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. And I, and I think, you know, Sam could get something to you further. It was a long meeting. I, I dropped off, I saw Sam and he said it went to past 11 o'clock and they're, they were doing it once a month. And now they're thinking if it continues to be that busy, they're going to go back to twice a month. Okay. Um, Bill, could I ask, um, have the two members that you spoke of Lisa and Callie, have they actually resigned already? Yes. And so um, if you want them to serve as alternates, the board needs to take an action to do that. Correct. Um, is that something that the board wants to consider tonight so that you don't have a situation where you don't have enough people? I, I don't believe that they uh, submitted resignation letters yet to the town clerk, um, in, in which case they were available to serve. Um, it, it has the same net effect. But yes, uh, as soon as we get the resignation letters at our next meeting, we should in fact appoint them, but I can appoint them as alternates if they're mm -hmm. still the same members. Right, right, that's why I was asking if they've resigned. Yeah. I thought they had, but. No, they've indicated that they that they need to because of their schedules, but um, as, as we know, we can't appoint um, unless, uh, they, they can't be in both positions. So. Right. Okay, uh, anything on ZBA? Anybody attend that? No. I'm not sure they even had a meeting between their last one. And then uh, assessment review board, they don't meet at this time of year. Ethics board hasn't met in quite some time. Let's move on to department reports. Um, we have some department reports we have our highway superintendent, Teresa, with us. So why don't we jump to that, Teresa Burr. Let's see where in the schedule Matt has your report. But... One second. There we go. All right, let's scroll down to that. We'll skip the assessor and dog for now. There we go. Teresa, did you wanna go ahead and give your report? Yes, please. Um, this is uh, in anticipation of budget talks later on this month. I just wanted to bring forward uh, some budget highlights that I'll be concentrating on. And the first one in order of um, importance is reinstate at least one mechanical equipment operator to the highway department, reinstate at least six hours to the highway department clerk and purchase a backhoe loader. The highway department crew are the first responders in snowstorms and other emergency situations. We clear the way for the fire department, ambulances, and police vehicles. 
Without the plows, our residents cannot travel safely to and from their destinations. As highway superintendent, I'm an advocate for the safety of our roads, knowing that it will help ensure the safety of our residents. The budget process in my department asks the town board to fund safe roads. We need equipment to do our work, manpower to run our plows, and materials to fix failing infrastructure. Historically, we have been underfunded in the equipment and paving lines, but we make do with what we have. Although the total appropriations for highway budget has decreased to remain level in the past few years, our Highway B Reserve Fund has steadily increased. We save money for times of financial stress in order to support our operations. I'm asking you to look carefully at the whole picture. What may be perceived as savings on paper may result in a reduction of services that will put our residents and roads at higher risk. In the past, regular transfers from the B fund reserves have supported our needs. This year, the transfer was reduced and reversed mid-year, causing a shortfall in the 2020 budget. The Town of Red Hook Highway Department has had an excellent record over the past 10 years. The pandemic has caused a financial situation that will take time to resolve. In my opinion, it would not be wise to add lower levels of service and higher risks to the residents by potentially reducing road safety. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. With our current level of staffing, we cannot hope to deliver what our taxpayers have come to depend on. I can do the asking, but you hold the power to make the positive changes that will benefit everyone. And I broke it down um, into three short pages. Uh, the first budget request increased the level of staffing by at least one mechanical equipment operator, otherwise known as a plow truck driver or truck driver. The base cost of salary and benefits is about $65,000. The optimum staffing level is eight crew members and that was pre-COVID. We had staffing levels of one foreman, two heavy equipment operators, and four mechanical equipment operators. With that staffing, snow plowing operations remain at their historically safe level. Spare crew members can cover plow routes and other work operations in times of illness or injury. And the crew is capable of helping other departments with hauling, tree work, snow clearing, et cetera. A manageable option, seven crew members, one foreman, two heavy equipment operators, and four mechanical equipment operators. Staffing can still maintain levels of snow plowing service, except in times of illness or injury. A debilitating level, six crew members, one foreman, two HEOs, three MEOs. This skeleton crew leaves no room for replacement of staff due to injury or illness. Plowing operations will be reorganized into longer runs, which will in turn place greater stress and fatigue on both drivers and equipment. Increased stress and fatigue will become a safety issue for plow drivers and residents who are sharing the road. Perceived savings will be reduced by increased overtime and the need to spread higher levels of material on the roads during plow runs. Salt ratio to sand will need to be increased as mechanical snow clearing slows down. All of the above can snowball into an unmanageable situation, leaving roads in poor condition for longer periods of time. The town may be held accountable for liabilities that result from the reduced levels of service. The next budget request is to increase the highway department clerk's hours from six to 12. Originally the highway department clerk was at 16 hours. Her hours were cut by 10, she now has six hours. The approximate cost of the increase for the year is $5,600. The optimum level was 16 hours. The pre-COVID level of clerk's hours enables the full execution of the job description created by the town, which I sent to the town board. The clerk can support other departments with website editing. The bills are paid in a timely fashion. And extra hours benefit detailed record keeping, reconciliation of budget, and research into technology upgrades to ensure proper storage of data for reports and future administrations. A manageable level, 12 hours. Basic duties can be performed in a timely fashion by focusing on billing. 
Many clerks employed by the town work a minimum of 15 to 19 hours. 12 hours can still be considered a saving to the overall budget without one person bearing an unfair burden of loss of work time. Debilitating, six hours. It's an unrealistic expectation for the amount of paperwork that is required by the highway department. Complicated software and length of remote sign-in process can use up the total week's allotment. Lag time between purchasing and bill processing results in double billing with less time to reconcile accounts. The implication that the highway superintendent can make up the difference in hours is unrealistic based on the fact that I am not capable of navigating the billing software efficiently. Over a decade ago, when I last did the clerking duties, I was using a typewriter and carbon copies for purchase orders. The highway department has not been without at least a 12 hour clerk in the past 20 years. The job has become more demanding with the increased use of technology and expanded record keeping requirements. The third budget request, a backhoe loader machine. Uh, approximate cost, $120,000. The optimum, the purchase of a backhoe loader at $120,000 and a skid steer at $52,000. This would fulfill the equipment replacement schedule as indicated by the equipment inventory total cost divided by the expected years of useful life. This is not the town's historical approach. We know that. Our equipment purchase plan is generally reactive instead of proactive. Replacing aging equipment in a timely fashion saves maintenance and repair and provides a greater level of safety to the operator. Unexpected breakdowns during emergency response and construction can increase cost and liability exposure. Manageable purchase of just a backhoe. This piece of equipment was originally on the replacement schedule two years ago, but was dropped off due to the unexpected breakdown of our dump truck, which was purchased instead. We did not purchase equipment last year when a request for a plow truck was denied. We have put it back on the schedule since it is a critical part of our emergency response when trees come down across the roads during storms. The backhoe is a versatile year-round machine that can perform multiple functions and has interchangeable attachments. Our current machine is 21 years old, which is past the industry standard of useful life. Um, the explanation for useful life versus life expectancy has to do with the fact that we used to list our, our life expectancy at 15 to 20 years. But the useful life of an asset is an estimation of the length of time the asset can be reasonably used to generate income and be a benefit to the government. Useful life does not refer to the length of time the asset will last. The useful life of identical assets varies by user, and that life depends on the asset's age, frequency of use, condition of the business environment, and repair policy. Additional factors that affect an asset's useful life include anticipated technological improvements, changes in laws, and economic changes. We have updated the equipment inventory to show useful life versus life expectancy. Debilitating option, no purchase of equipment this year. Delays in purchasing results in increased potential breakdowns, maintenance costs, and safety issues. The capital equipment replacement plan becomes a worthless piece of paper that continues to be pushed onto future administrations. Just like our roads, Delays in investment now cost more than later. Equipment costs rise an average of 3% compounded per year. And some machinery, such as the backhoe, are not cost effective to rent and cannot be borrowed easily, especially during widespread weather events and during the busy construction season when they are in demand. I'm looking forward to working with the town board to find ways um, to save in our budget for this year and next year, and hopefully come to some kind of understanding about what is right for the this um, highway department, because what benefits the highway department is going to benefit the tax paying residents. And that's our focus. Thank you. 
Thank you, Teresa. <clears throat> we'll get more into this during budget season, but um, just a, a couple of things that I wanted to say. Um, just like we uh, uh, voted on an IMA with building department, we've had an intermunicipal agreement with the village of Red Hill. Um, we have, as, as you know, because you've been instrumental in um, uh, continuing shared services with equipment <clears throat> and with labor. And so I've already discussed with the, the mayor about their availability to pitch in and help if we have snowstorms where we need an extra plow person. And I realize that that person needs to have a CDL and have experience. Um, but as you've indicated your desire to have the village take over uh, the plowing responsibilities for the traditions development, um, which of which they are open to that as well, um, that they would, um, you know, the, the mayor is open to discussing additional roadways that would be near the village, adjacent to the village that uh, they could take over perhaps to help us out um, with plowing because uh, the finances are, are such that we can't staff a department based upon um, ideal uh, plowing um, staffing right now, unfortunately, because of the loss in revenue. And so the same holds true of the backhoe. As you know, they have recently purchased a backhoe. I think within the last couple of years, it sits in our highway garage. I do understand the argument that that same backhoe might need, be needed by them during a storm. We do have similar equipment like a payloader, which could remove things from, from the roadways. So um, I realize that your department, like all departments here, has had to adjust and you know, all we can do is ask you to, to do your best and for the crew. And, um, you know, if there's a way that we can, and I will be providing some uh, funding for temporary help during those times when we might find ourselves short staff um, for those particular applications in the budget. So, but we'll get more into this during budget and I don't wanna, you know, take up too much time uh, discussing that this evening, but, um, let's, uh, let's continue to, to discuss these issues uh, in budget season. Okay. Um, we have uh, an assessor report in our packet. And I'll have to scroll back up here. Um, the assessor reports uh, working on uh, small claims petitions. Article seven, that's when people object to their assessments. Um, the renewals for exemptions are all prepared and they're gonna be mailed out um, towards the end of the year. And this is another department that's had a reduction in staffing. They're down to uh, one, one day for uh, that clerk. Um, there's been an increase in sales and we have seen that there has been sort of uh, a, a flight um, towards moving out of the city. And so we've seen an increase in sales. And so the town of Red Hook had 18 sales, uh, Village of Red Hook four, and Tivoli Garden was the one sale in uh, Tivoli. Okay, uh, dog control, Bill Hamill. As always, a very exciting report. Um, okay. August was a little busier than other months. Um, the only, uh, there was a dog that somehow got out of a, a during a storm and was running around uh, near Pin Oak for several days. And uh, they were happy they were able to uh, find the officer, uh, the ACO was able to find it and bring it home. Uh, there was an incident involving one of our mail carriers who got bit by a dog, but the dog was vaccinated and licensed um, and the mail carrier did not wish to file any uh, complaint or dangerous dog paperwork. So nothing happened with that. Um, they had, uh, you know, the usual like a wildlife uh, call about some animal, but it was, um, generally uh, and mercifully not a busy month. Very good. <clears throat> okay. There's not only loose dogs, but sometimes there's loose other animals. I was out on a loose sheep uh, effort last weekend till about 1230. They weren't found till the following morning, um, but 
do know that you live in an agricultural community here. And those of us with animals wake up sometimes to find out that the, the tree has taken down the fencing and the cattle are out or what have you. Okay, building and zoning. Bill, would you like to also uh, give us that summary report from- Certainly, uh, for the period, I believe from August 24th to uh, today, uh, they issued uh, 31 permits. They did 41 inspections. Uh, they've issued 18 certificates of completion or occupancy. There were four complaints filed. I'm not sure what they are because I just got this report. And the revenue was $12,899 that came in. Uh, it was a busy month uh, for putting on roofs. That seemed to be one of the more, um, there was eight roofs put on during that period. So it's the sum, this is the time to do it. Uh, and then there was a variety of other, you know, uh, chimneys, driveways, electrical, hot tubs, things of that nature. So, um, and this is the season um, when the weather's still nice and people are doing work, especially outside stuff, um, they're trying to get it done, doors and windows and things of that nature. Well, many of us feel like we can't really travel anywhere, so we might as well work on our staycation projects. Indeed. Um, okay, very good. Um, Bill O'Neill is not here to give us the police report. Christine Kane, would you be kind enough to do that for us? Oh, well, okay, I will have to find it. Oh, I can, I can scroll for you, I think. Um, Oh dear, let's see. Um, if you're watching from home. What was that? No. A lot of pinging going on. Sorry, no, that's not me. <laughs> okay. If you want to put yourself. Okay, so through. let's see. I oh, I have a summary page here, I think. Yeah. So, aren't you glad I didn't read the whole 47 pages in the building report? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Looks like we had um, 138 incidents during the period with nine arrests and 38 tickets issued. Okay. This is for August. Okay. Um, in the village of Tivoli, there were four incidents, no arrests and no tickets. Okay. okay. And this is just to give the folks at home just an idea of what our reports look like and some of the things going on in our community that the police handle. Okay, let's move on, shall we, to recreation. Okay, that's me again, I think. It actually has my name on it, but I'm happy to give it to you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why your name ends up on that, but. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, as Robert did mention earlier in the meeting, the rec park is officially open. So, and as you can see from the report, all of the parts of the um, park are getting tremendous use. All of the court sections, basketball, tennis, pickleball, et cetera, um, are full and getting lots and lots of use. So that's wonderful to see. Um, and even the, the new Challenger field, which is that all of these are at Rec Park East. So the new Challenger field actually already has practices and games happening on it. Um, at a lot of different levels, uh, little league, girls softball, and uh, men's softball, as well as baseball. So that is great to see. Uh, the playground is open, as we mentioned uh, previously, and again, is getting lots of use. Uh, you can make reservations with the town clerk for to use the pavilion. Um, and as Robert mentioned, there are um, 12 different hand sanitizer stations set up in the park now. Um, one of them is near the north entrance to the pavilion. 
The restrooms are also open um, and there have been, uh, there's been quite a bit of work um, done on those, a few little things that have to be completed uh, still, but nothing that kept them from opening. Um, the snack bar is not going to be open this year at all um, for, for mostly for COVID reasons. So um, some of the other issues that we're going to get worked on this year have been set aside because that's not going to be open. Um, working on the batting cage and also the dugouts for the, for both um, fields at both fields. So that's um, underway and some uh, dug dugouts probably won't be completed until next year. Um, as you might imagine, lots of mowing now that keeps the, um, the crew busy, particularly at Rec Park West. And um, so a few odds and ends that have to be still finished up, for instance, getting a um, a garage, uh, a prefab garage, I guess you would call it, has been ordered from Bay Horse uh, Barns and Gazebos for the new grooming um, attachment that's required for the Challenger field. Um, we've got a lot of uh, dirt still left over from dirt piles that have to be moved around and shifted between the two properties and also some of it to go to St. Margaret. So that's, we're trying to figure out a way to work on that. Um, still some other things that have to happen that, you know, the team, the team is great and they keep up with so many things, still working on tree cleanup, um, and the lighting, um, in the park has been very, really upgraded terrifically for particularly on the challenge field, but also on all the courts. Um, still looking at whether we can get Wi-Fi um, down in, in the recreation park. Um, so hopefully that we will find out soon if that is going to work. If we can, not only would that be great for people while they're at the park or um, you know, students who are on uh, remote schooling that might need access to Wi-Fi, but that would also enable us to be able to, to put some security cameras down there now that we've spent all this time and effort to upgrade the equipment and um, courts and other parts of the property. It'd be nice if we could add an extra layer of security down there. Um, and lots of other, you know, odds and ends. The library is setting up a, or has set up a story walk project and we have to keep, um, keep an eye out for interesting things. Um, the, the playground turtle that everybody was asking about um, is, has been refurbished and is um, waiting to be um, reinstalled. So that's the, that's the highlights. Okay, and we thank Jay for his work on the turtle. The turtle looks very exciting. And it looks like Wi-Fi is happening. I guess Spectrum's working with the uh, library on the install. So that should be set soon. Um, Jacob, tree preservation. And yep. I, sh I should preface this with, we just found out from DEC late this afternoon that we didn't get our grant for uh, Rec Park West. We had a significant tree grant application. So I'll be the purveyor of bad news, but would you like to give the report for the commission? Yeah, I'm glad to not have to give the bad news. Um, so the committee has not met in person, um, but has continued to communicate via email. And as you mentioned, um, we had a grant application to the New York State Urban Forestry Council, or Urban Forestry Council, sorry, um, which we didn't get. So um, that's all of the updates for the Tree Preservation Commission. Okay, you know, Jacob, I was thinking the um, when uh, Brenda Kegel was out there on Rec Park West. If you haven't been there, by the way, uh, folks, it, just go ahead and park in our um, abbreviated parking lot. It's sort of set down on in and visually. Um, uh, you know, it just folds right into the landscape. Um, and there's some benches there and you can try out our now stone dust path. Um, Brenda had a good idea that we should probably uh, plant a tree or two, maybe one initially next to those benches. So when people are sitting, they could have some shade uh, that they could uh, take in because they may be tired at the time. So I know the yeah. tree, tree committee is great at identifying, you know, specific mm -hmm. places and and they certainly know their trees. So something as simple as that, we could uh, try to scrounge up some money for to, to at least put one tree in and see if it might take. 
Yeah, yeah. that seems like a great idea. I think that I, I would also encourage people to, to check out the, the trail there. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, it's just a, it's sort of a teaser for what's to come um, for the village to village trail. And that's going to be a few more years before that's fully built out. But it'll give people a sense of what uh, what everybody's been working on for for many years. So very much appreciate that. Um, so I think that's all the reports that we have. We do have some correspondence, and then we may want to take some action on the two um, items for correspondence. First, as we discussed uh, previously, there was a request to, um, at first, uh, close a road to do a filming. We like to encourage um, uh, responsible uh, promotion of our community. Um, but as we mentioned, we don't yet have the authority to fully close a road. Um, we have had many events, however, that have shared a road, whether it's biking or whatever. And so um, we've asked those applicants to fill out an application. Uh, there's language in our um, neighborhood block party um, that speaks to events and um, to uh, give us the information that they want. And so um, and I think Teresa has indicated that she would like the board to take action on this so that she can work with the applicant on um, uh, you know, any type of equipment that be, may be necessary. Um, we would obviously have uh, the usual requirements, insurance requirements, which they're willing to provide. Um, and also um, we would ask that they hire um, a uh, traffic control officer for both ends of the shoot. It's on a very, you know, relatively quiet road, Woods Road. Um, but certainly we want to make sure that there's a safe passage for all the, the traffic and that they would, of course, agree to not block the roadway during the course of uh, the time there. They're looking on October 2nd and 3rd. Is there any uh, questions? If, if not, we can go ahead and approve this and then forward this to uh, Teresa so she can work with them on this. All right, um, all in favor? Christine? Aye. Jacob? Aye. Uh, Bill Hamill? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then we had a correspondence from the Tivoli mayor. Um, as many of you know, a few years ago when we were talking about upgrading a rec park facilities, and, um, you know, we have, um, I, I know Teresa had mentioned about investing in, in departments and equipments, and we have uh, increased our investment on our paving lines uh, from what they were previously a few years ago, and equipment certainly of what it was a few years ago. We could always uh, consider more, obviously, but um, our recreation facilities had gone, in some cases, decades, you know, so certain aspects of the parks had gone without uh, upkeep or upgrades. And uh, the Tivoli Park is, um, you know, an example of that as well. Um, when we were looking at our rec park improvements, there was conversation about, well, let's, let's try to, uh, you know, utilize the fields that we have and the parks that we have now um, and upgrade them so that they have greater utility and that they're more accessible. And so the village of Tivoli went out uh, for a CDBG grant like we have for our parks and they were awarded um, $70,000 uh, to increase accessibility, um, to uh, you know, work on the infrastructure, lighting, drainage, some of which they'll uh, attempt to do themselves. Um, and then there's equipment and so on and so forth. And at the time we uh, you know, indicated to uh, the mayor that we would be um, you know, favorable to helping to um, upgrade or, or maintain really is what we're talking about in many cases, their park because we recognize that children go from, you know, the town's park, the village's park, 
and share in that uh, endeavor. So the request, it turns out that the grant that they applied for, there's quite a gap between the lowest bid. Hey, Robert, can you uh, scroll back up so we can see that? You're kind of in the middle of two pages. Oh, I'm so Thanks. sorry. Would you like to see this page? There you go. Yeah, for the people at home, I think that haven't seen it yet, that's more helpful. There we go. So, uh, yes, they, they had three bids for the project, and I'm sort of dumbfounded by the variance in the bids, but I yeah. think it's not, not relevant. Um, but the lowest bid was for 130 eight ish thousand dollars and they only have seventy thousand dollars so they're going to pull from their fund balance um and they're going to scale down the project so they are asking whether or not we would consider helping um their project and uh so what's being removed from the, the contract and the scope of work is replacing bathroom doors concrete apron catch basin pipe between catch basins and then equipment. You know, it, it sort of saddens me to see that we're not even gonna buy equipment for a playground up in Tivoli, I don't, yeah. Um, so the scope would be reduced to $86,000. Um, they're gonna add some work, which is changed to LED fixtures. And um, that reminds me that we did uh, did finally have our conversion of the Red Hook Highway Department, um, their fixtures. And so hopefully we'll realize some savings from that as well. Um, motion sensor light fixture um, and a new security camera for their pavilion. They are um, then looking at a project scope of 88,579 dollars uh, contingency of 10 percent in addition to that and i know that there are some engineer costs i don't know that are included in this and so the mayor is asking whether or not the town would um, assist in that endeavor and has made a request of ten thousand dollars Um, to make the park more accessible and attractive and available to townsfolk in Red Hook and Tivoli. Are there any questions? These are the line items broken out and they've colored what's, what's being removed that they're gonna try and do themselves with uh, uh, forced labor. I have a question. You're contemplating giving $10,000 to the village of Tivoli for their playground. But in the case of the highway department clerk who is paid out of the A fund, you can't afford the $5,600 to get back six hours. I find that to be very disturbing. Okay. Thank you. Teresa. And need. Okay. And I have been told that we do not have funding to pay for six hours for the clerk. And you're proposing to pay $10,000 for the village of Tivoli. Okay, yes, the, vill the village. The highway department clerk. Thank That's you, Teresa, yep. Yeah. I find it disturbing, thank okay. you. Thank you, Teresa. Yep, yeah, the village of Tivoli is, is within the town of Red Hook and the village uh, residents pay town, town taxes. Okay, any, uh, any thoughts uh, before we entertain uh, this, this motion? Okay. Um, is there a, a deadline or something involved? Because I, I was not yes. clear that we were gonna be voting on this this evening. So do we have to act on it tonight? He has asked if we would consider, he needs to make a decision, he needs to award the contract. But if you are not ready, um, you know, then, then do indicate that. Well, have we, um, you know, talked to, I mean, where would the funding come from for this out of our rec department budget? Uh, well, we could appropriate that um, out of rec funds. There's engineering lines. Some of this is engineering work. We would have to identify the sources. Um, we can take it out of fund balance. So that's something that we would need to decide this evening as well. 
Uh, okay, well, I, I, I mean, I read through the materials. I was there was nothing that um, told me that we were going to be voting on this this evening. So I would, I'd like to look into it a little bit more and understand where the funding would come from and how we would be covering that before I feel comfortable to vote. Okay, that works for me. Shall we hold off then until the next meeting? Bill Hamill, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think you can wait one to one meeting. Okay, I know they want to award it, but you know if that's if we need more time to contemplate it, we do. Yeah, Jacob, what are you? Uh, yeah, what are you yeah thinking? I agree. Yeah, I, I would echo the same things that okay. you said. Very good. All right, thank you. We'll table this until uh, our next meeting. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is October thirteenth. Um, before we conclude tonight's meeting, um, can um, we? Do we have a do we have another public comment section or or I just thought of one thing that I wanted to mention, which is um, that the village of Tivoli is is uh, embarking upon a large project to yeah. replace water mains yeah. in the village. And anyone who's been in the village um, would notice that the water tower project is underway, but starting in October. They will be working on replacing water mains along Woods Road and Broadway. And so um, there is going to be, um, you know, dis disruptions in traffic and parking, depending on, you know, where they are in that work. So it's probably going to be a lot of one lane traffic. Um, and so I think it's important just to let everybody know that um, the construction and timeframes are going to be from seven in the morning to three thirty in the afternoon. Um, and pretty much every day during the week. So, um, and that starts in October. So just to be aware, and they're starting on Woods Road, I believe. So, and then they'll be working their way to um, up Broadway. So just keep that in mind when you're um, visiting the village and wanting to, you know, um, move around um, as we go through the fall. Yes, and, and that's going to go on for many months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a huge project. And for folks at home who are not familiar, the village of Tivoli has had a sewer system since the WPA years, 1937, I think it was installed. And so it has certainly outlived its usefulness, its useful life. It's now on year 83. And so with grant funding um, and increased uh, rates to the users, um, they are redoing the entire system under the uh, guidance of the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority um, to ensure that there is reliable water and sewer for the community. So uh, thank you, Christine, for mentioning that. Okay, um, before we conclude, um, next week I'll be uh, proposing uh, the tentative 2021 budget. And um, I would like to know if we can uh, assign October 6th at 7 p.m. for our budget workshop. Does that work for you? That would be Tuesday the 6th, 7 p.m. That works for me. Okay. Works for me. Okay. Works for me. Okay. Robert, approximately how long um, would you like us to block off for that evening? Uh, two to three hours. Two, two and a half hours. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. If there's no conflicts, then let's go ahead and um, by motion call for a budget hearing October 6th at 7 p.m. A budget hearing or a budget workshop? A budget workshop, thank you. Did I say hearing a budget workshop for October 6th at 7 p.m.? All right, all in favor, yeah? Aye. I'll, sec I'll second aye. it and then, okay. yeah, aye. Aye, and Bill Hamill, aye. Okay. Very good, uh, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, having no further business, um, I entertain a motion to 
uh, close the meeting of September 23rd. Uh, stay healthy. We wish you the best and good night. Good night. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Good night.